Denmark is famous for a few reasons, one of those being Hans Christian Andersen, a famous writer of works such as The Princess and the Pea, The Emperor's New Clothes, and The Little Mermaid, plus many, many more. He was born in a dense where you can actually go and see the houses he was born and raised in, which have both been now turned into museums. They also have loads of statues of him, and even their pedestrian crossings have silhouettes of him on the lights. It's definitely the place to go if you love Hans Christian Andersen's works, but there's also a lot to see in Copenhagen itself. After all, he did live there for many years and write some of his most famous works there. So my name's Claire and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Copenhagen, but not just any tour, a tour all about Hans Christian Andersen. Let's start with what is Copenhagen's possibly most famous tourist attraction. It's definitely the most photographed. The Little Mermaid Statue. This was commissioned in 1909 by Danish beer baron Carl Jacobsen, who was moved after attending a ballet based on the Little Mermaid. The sculptor Edvard Eriksson modelled the face of the statue after prima ballerina Ellen Price, whilst the body was modelled after his wife. Unsurprisingly, the ballerina did not want to pose naked for him. And the statue survived World War II and the Great Depression, but has been vandalised in recent years by activists and protesters, often losing limbs, its head, and even getting an unfortunate paint job. Unfortunately, a lot of people are actually very underwhelmed by this statue, so before you go, please do remember this is life-sized, so it's going to be a lot smaller than most people seem to think it is, and it is the most photographed place in Copenhagen. So even in the off season when we visited, it will be very, very busy and you will have to battle through the crowds for that perfect shot or selfie. That's why I actually suggest walking down the harbour just a little bit to the genetically modified mermaid. It's about the same size as the original Little Mermaid statue, but there are no crowds around. In fact, we only saw two other people there. Plus, it's actually truer to Hans Christian Andersen's original bleak fairy tale. It too was commissioned by a beer baron as well, by a none other than Carlsberg. <laughs> Going in the opposite direction and back down into Copenhagen, you will find Nyhaven. Here you will find the houses that Hans Christian Andersen actually lived in, including number 67, number 18, and number 20, which is where he wrote the tinderbox, Little Claws and Big Claws, and The Princess and the Pea. As well as being home to Anderson whilst he wrote some of his most famous works, Nyhaven is a gorgeous place to sit and have a drink or a meal. Just be aware that this is a very busy and touristy area, so the prices do reflect that and it can be a little bit expensive. A place that was a huge influence to Anderson's work is Tivoli Gardens. It wasn't open when we visited, but we could see it from the outside and it's a famous theme park right in the middle of the city, home to some beautiful gardens and exciting rides. Its beauty and charm have actually influenced many over the years, including Walt Disney himself. He is said to have taken inspiration from the mood and atmosphere from Tivoli Gardens and that helped him to create Disneyland, which is now the top grossing theme park in the entire world. But we're not here for Disney, we are here for Hans Christian Andersen and Tivoli is responsible for influencing him as well. In fact, it's supposed to have inspired him to write the fairy tale of the Nightingale. Another place that has shown influence in Hans Christian Andersen's works is the Rundertarn, or the Round Tower, as it's mentioned in a few of his writings. In the tinderbox, the largest of the three dogs is said to have eyes as large as the Round Tower at Copenhagen. In the Elder Tree Mother, an old married couple remembers how they used to go up the Round Tower and look down on Copenhagen. In the novel To Be or Not To Be, the main character, Neil's Bride, is born and grows up in the Round Tower, where his father is a gatekeeper. His presence in his work shows how important the Tarn was to Hans Christian Andersen. The library hall in the tower once held the entire book collection for the university, and Hans Christian Andersen used to visit for his studies and for inspiration. 
Now that hall is used for events in art, culture, history and science. The last place I'm going to talk about is the Sistan Cemetery, the final resting place of the writer, and a beautiful place to sit and have a picnic. Yes, people really do sit and have their lunch in the cemetery. And it's easy to see why. This is a beautiful place filled with flowers, squirrels, and rows of trees. However, do remember to be respectful as the cemetery is still in use by families today. You can either explore and try and find the Hans Christian Andersen grave for yourself through a maze of signs which all seem to take you in circles, or you can book onto a guided tour through the cemetery and be shown all the famous graves and interesting sites. Of course, this is just a very small selection of what there is to see. There's also a Hans Christian Andersen Museum in Copenhagen and a few different statues as well. But unfortunately, we didn't have time to go and see those. So if you can think of anything else which people really should visit if they're big fans of his work, do pop it down in the comments below and help a traveller out. And uh, if you are thinking about visiting Copenhagen, do like and subscribe and check back in future for more Copenhagen videos. Still got a few more to go, including cheap and free Copenhagen if you're a bit low on money, and food, because food is yummy. Thank you so much for joining us for our Hans Christian Andersen tour. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy traveling. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Safe travels. Bye bye. <laughs>